Good morning. Last week, the Supreme Court endangered the lives of millions of Americans by rolling back Roe versus Wade and triggered a major public health crisis in Missouri, where our state legislature has already discussed some of the most extreme laws in the country. Abortion should be legal, safe, accessible, and affordable. The state's attorney general, desperate for higher office, was proud to proclaim Missouri's abortions banned. But what he also proclaimed is he does not care about the health care of Missourians, especially women of color, and those who have been dis disproportionately impacted by lack of access to health care based on where they live. The High Court's decision is a dangerous political play that will jeopardize the lives of women for years to come. In St. Louis County, we do not prescribe to these dangerous beliefs. That's why I will support the County Council proposal to designate at least $1 million in ARPA funds to offer logistical support, including child care and transportation, for those who need access to abortion services. The $1 million will allow the Department of Public Health to provide grants to community partners who can better assist their clients in getting the reproductive services they need, including abortions. The funds will not be used to assist abortion services or used to encourage or counsel a procedure. ARPA funds, no, formerly known as the American Rescue Plan Act funds, may be used to respond to the far-reaching public health and negative economic impacts of the pandemic, including supporting the health of our communities. This money will ensure women, especially those who cannot afford or otherwise do not have access to quality health care, that they can get the care that they need. In 10 days, the County Council will meet to decide how to best spend the county's remaining $74 million in ARPA funds. And I hope that $1 million of those funds will help those who need access but no longer have it, thanks to that last week's court decision. Public health departments are safety nets, ensuring those who are uninsured or underinsured have access to health care services. Reproductive and sexual health services are a critical piece of the health department's mission. The Department of Public Health is uniquely positioned to work with community partners for the logistical support that will be possible with these ARPA funds. Back in March, during Women's History Month, I signed an executive order committing St. Louis County to the reproductive and sexual health services it currently provides while working to expand the services in an equitable way to address health and racial disparities. We knew that the Supreme Court decision was imminent, and we did not want there to be uncertainty on the future of public health. The executive order states in part that there shall continue to be a program administered by the Department of Public Health to improve information and access to quality contraceptive service. And that program shall include expanded training in patient counseling, racial bias training, and comprehensive contraceptive clinical training. Through the executive order signed nearly four months ago, the Department of Public Health is strengthening its partnership with the Missouri Family Health Council and exploring additional partners and funding opportunities. And the department is working to increase promotion of the availability of reproductive health services. Public health has been a budget cut for Republican administrations for years, and the lack of funding has taken its toll on providing the most basic health care services to those who need them the most. Last week's court decision hurts the vulnerable that much more and some of the services that the Department of Public Health provides include family planning, counseling and options, nutrition services, annual exams, and screenings for predominantly female cancers. The services related to pregnancy and childbirth are in integrated into primary care services. And testing and treatment for sexually transmitted infections are also an important role of the health department. Through our three community health centers and the Justice Center, about 1,500 patients receive these services and care every year. And about three-fourths of them are black, and the majority live in high-poverty neighborhoods. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has identified reducing the national rate of unintended pregnancy as a critical step to improving health. And unintended childbearing is associated with smoking and drinking during pregnancy, premature birth, and higher rates of child neglect and maltreatment. The majority of the United States believes in a woman's right to choose, and I'm certainly 
in that majority. And that's why I'm going to do all I can to help those who are being left behind by this recent court decision. The future chapters of our country's history must provide not only hope, but commitments that show we do not leave our most vulnerable behind in the name of political gain. I'm pleased to have with me today St. Louis County Prosecuting Attorney Wesley Bell and Lauren Naki, Board President of Pro-Choice Missouri, and they'll both make a few remarks. Wesley. I'll keep my remarks brief uh, uh, for those who uh, uh, pay attention to the news, and I anticipate this group is in that category. Uh, we have a lot going on in our office, uh, but I thought that it was important um, that, uh, that I'd be here today um, along with the county executive, uh, the board president of, of, of pro-choice, uh, to make clear where we stand. And we stand with um, women to have autonomy over their own bodies, their reproductive rights, um, and I am very happy that um, not only the St. Louis County Executive, the County Council, myself, uh, but even our residents um, stand with us um, on this issue. Um, I find that this ruling is terribly, terribly misguided and dangerous. Uh, from, a, from a criminal justice standpoint, prosecutors are mandated pr to protect public policy by seeking accountability for those who endanger our safety and prosperity. Um, and in no way uh, does someone making decisions about their own health and their own reproductive rights uh, uh, endanger the safety of anyone. Uh, we believe that it is in the best interest of public safety uh, for abortion to be legal and regulated by criminalizing and therefore and thereby deregulating abortion is the Missouri, legisla Missouri legislature not safe in previously um, legal abortion providers that have endangered public safety in Missouri. Um, and so again, uh, I commend uh, my counterparts uh, in St. Louis County and, and obviously the work of Pro-Choice Missouri and other uh, reproductive rights organizations and, and we want to be clear that we stand with them. Thank you. Good morning. Hello, I'm Laura Naki. I'm president of Pro-Choice Missouri, the largest statewide pro-abortion grassroots organization dedicated to promoting full and equal access to reproductive choices. This includes preventing unintended pregnancies, choosing safe legal abortion, and bearing healthy children. I'm also a St. Louis County resident and a licensed clinical social worker. I work with pregnant people who need support I support my patients in all of their decisions and pregnancy outcomes. The Supreme Court decision last week was devastating. Even prior to Friday's news, people often traveled hundreds of miles to access abortion. Now they would put in the position of fleeing the state to access care and assuming the legal risk to self-manage an abortion are carrying an unwanted pregnancy to term and all the complications and increased health risks that come with that. For many of my patients, long-standing impacts of generational trauma, institutional racism, and economic insecurity have created barriers to accessing health care. Now with Missouri's abortion ban in place, there will be more anxiety and distrust and fear in the health care setting. Fear for both an individual's bodily autonomy and fear of prosecution for pregnancy outcomes. As with all attacks on abortion, this ban will fall hardest on black people, rural communities, people living paycheck to paycheck, people with disabilities, young people, and our LGBTQ plus communities. But this effort today is an important step in rebuilding trust. Trust in our communities, trust in our healthcare system, and trust in leadership. We hope that we are rebuilding abortion access for Missourians. The goal of this effort is to address these inequities in access to healthcare and support pregnant people in all of their options. The same person across their reproductive life has a variety of needs from carrying a pregnancy to term, choosing abortion, and experiencing a miscarriage. The research and community outreach led by Pro-Choice Missouri to support the development of this bill has been in the works for all, over a year, both in anticipation of the very real loss of abortion access 
and, and to address the parallel public health crisis of the COVID-19 pandemic, the maternal mortality crisis, and now the abortion access crisis. The county's commitment today will help ensure that all St. Louisans have the support they need to access abortion care. This proposal addresses logistical access such as travel, lodging, and childcare, which are often the greatest barriers to getting to an appointment, and now will be even greater given the increased burden of traveling out of state. This is a powerful example of St. Louis leadership that we hope the nation will follow. An example of what a public health response should look like community directed and responsive, putting dollars back into the hands of providers in our region so they can better serve our community. All abortions are life-saving and all abortion reasons are valid. I know that the following weeks and months are going to be exceptionally hard for our community, but I have hope standing here today with our leaders that we can better support St. Louisans in accessing all their reproductive health care choices. Thank you. Thanks, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. With the ARPA funds that you're setting aside or hoping to, are you expecting some sort of legal action after that, or what are you expecting in terms of what the AG would do? Oh, so the question is uh, what to expect from the Attorney General's office. Uh, I don't really know what to expect. We're here to protect the health and welfare of the residents of St. Louis County. We'll move forward in the way we think is the best for residents of St. Louis County, and uh, we'll see what happens. Does spending ARPA money in this way follow the guidelines that the federal government set out about what's appropriate and inappropriate for use of that money? Uh, so the question is about whether or not ARPA funds, if I can paraphrase, whether or not ARPA funds are, can be used for this purpose. And uh, we believe they can. We've studied this uh, quite a bit over the past few days, as, long as, as well as other folks. The interpretation of the attorneys in the city of St. Louis is the same, but there is a pathway to use um, uh, ARPA funds uh, to help women who uh, are trying to um, make a difficult decision. We uh, will not um, participate in counseling. We will not um, participate in uh, uh, paying for abortion services. The state law is clear, and we will follow the state law. Uh, but uh, we do believe that ARPA funds can be used uh, to uh, support uh, transportation or child care or other, um, other type of activity uh, for women who are making a very difficult decision and, uh, and are going to have a difficult pathway to do it. Uh, the council last night approved a resolution condemning the overturn of Roe and standing for a woman's right to choose. Do you think you'll get support from the Democratic majority for this proposal? So the question is um, about uh, whether or not we'll get support from the council. Um, I believe that we will. Um, I believe this is um, um, a, a small piece of the ARPA funds. It's, uh, important, and it's important to protect the health and welfare of residents of St. Louis County and abortion is health care. And this is um, um, this is a part of what we do. Um, there is a limited role that local government or county government can play in this conversation, and we'll find that role, and, and we will pursue it. Question for Mr. Bell. Okay. So are you saying that if uh, a doctor performs an abortion and it's not a medical emergency and they've violated the state law the way it's written, that you will not prosecute that doctor? And talk about choosing which laws you believe are valid and not valid uh, to, to uh, prosecute those who violate one thing that we, uh, we all understand and has been litigated is the discretion of prosecutors. We have limited resources and um, prosecutors every day make decisions on how to best utilize those resources. Um, our um, priority from the very uh, day that I walked into this office is um, violent and serious offenses and, and defenders and prosecuting those cases. And in a case like this, um, in, a, in a situation like you explained with respect to pro abortion providers and things of that nature, um, there, there is no um, public safety concern. There's no public safety issue. Matter of fact, quite the opposite. Um, this is about protecting our residents, protecting those, making that difficult choice, and we will use our discretion accordingly. Mr. Bell, do you expect that could change, though? Like, like Dr. Page mentioned about the Attorney General. Do I expect that um, to change? Well, could it change? I mean, would state law supersede what you can do on the local level? Um, I, I can't speak to um, what the state legislature 
uh, will do. Um, as far as our office and what I can control, um, we intend to utilize our resources in the manner uh, that I, that I uh, alluded to with respect to serious and violent offenders. I'll give you a perfect example. We've, we've uh, been very vocal about our diversion programs and um, we have the ability to prosecute um, low-level drug possessors, someone who has a small amount of marijuana. We have the ability to prosecute them, but I think um, St. Louis County residents and nationally, I think we've seen that that is not the best use of our resources. It does not keep us safe. It does not help people. And those are our guiding principles, and they will continue. If there's no more questions for me, I'm going to get back to the court courthouse. Thanks, uh, with the proposal to spend about a million dollars in federal aid, um, is there any is there an estimated timeline for how long that money would be there? Is, would, is, would this be there for a year or two, as long as it takes? Okay, so the question's about the details of the proposal, and the proposal is just that. Um, we're starting a conversation. We will coordinate um, our programming with the City of St. Louis. They will have a very similar program, and uh, we'll align those as much as possible. Um, we. Um, We'll first wait for the approval of the County Council and then we will create um, a program in the City of St. Louis that will, um, that, that will follow the pathway of ARPA funds. ARPA funds, ARPA funds are time limited, uh, so um, you know, we will uh, be able to use them until they expire. Dr. Page, what if the County Council doesn't agree, doesn't go along with you? Then what do you do? So the question is, what if the County Council doesn't approve uh, this uh, um, funding for ARPA, then it won't happen because the County Council appropriates all funds um, in St. Louis County. And they, um, the approval of the County Council is required to give us permission to spend money on anything. And uh, this is one proposal that's in front of the County Council and they'll make that decision. I, I believe that um, uh, the, the County Council is headed in this direction and I'm here to say that if they pass this uh, legislation that it'll have my support and I will work to implement uh, programming and the support that's required to make these, uh, this type of uh, resource available to women in St. Louis County that's consistent with state law. And can you respond to Councilman Fitch last night at the meeting? He said that you were doing this essentially as a campaign ploy. Well, uh, the question is responding to Councilman Fitch. And, uh, you know, Councilman Fitch has been a reliable political opponent since before the last election and has a weekly criticism. I don't expect that to change. But this is not the time for politics and cynicism about what the county is doing to protect the health and welfare of people in St. Louis County. This is not about him. This is about protecting the health and welfare of women in St. Louis County who are facing uh, of, of some very difficult decisions in their lives moving forward because of this Supreme Court decision. With this ban, I think there's confusion on contraceptions. Has the health department seen an increase of calls or anything of, of concern in that matter and what's going on? So the question is about the confusion around contraception. Uh, you bet. There is a lot of confusion, uh, and uh, uh, that's one thing this decision did, and the current state law in Missouri has done, is create confusion. I can tell you as a doctor that contraception is not abortion. It's very different. And uh, I hope that um, we expend a lot of resources in our community, in our state, to clear that up. Uh, clear up questions around Plan B, clear up uh, questions around IUDs, and other forms of birth control. There's a, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of conversation that we need to have, but contraception is not abortion. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.